The Academy of Management has a very large annual meeting of 11,000, and our members, particularly those outside of North America, were asking for a new experience elsewhere on the globe. The Academy has 100 and, uh, members from 117 countries, um, and whatever the number is, pushing 20,000 members. I noticed that there were 93 members from the entire continent of Africa, and the vision of, of the Academy is to inspire, enable a better world through our scholarship management organizations. And so there was just a sense of there's a billion people here, there are robust economies, there's need to be sure, and many people on the outside see the need in Africa, but of course there's dynamism here, an incredible entrepreneurial spirit and innovations of various kinds. Uh, so I had the sense that it's been ignored by the international scholarly community, and I wanted to bring, if you will, the world to Africa and Africa to the world. Now, as I say that, that is a grand, naive vision, uh, but that, is what, that was what was in my heart as I was trying to imagine what this, what this conference, and frankly, a, a series of other initiatives packed around the conference um, might achieve. The problem is that the overwhelming image of Africa, unfortunately, has been negative. And so when people see images of Africa from the rest of the world, they think of Africa historically as being hopeless, poverty, conflict. So many people might look at that and say, what could we possibly learn about management from Africa? And it's just the opposite, that in fact some brilliant things are being done here that we need to share with the rest of the world. When we decided that we would create a new conference of this type, we asked our full membership of 18,000 for proposals. And it was Gibbs that came forward with this really unique concept and working together with other members of the association, uh, we've created this smaller conference together and Gibbs has been a fabulous partner. I think in terms of the breakdown of the delegates, we've had some people at the absolute top of their game, some really established scholars. We've got doctoral students who are starting out and, and people in everywhere in between. And the hope here is that it's like yeast that can start identifying and, and fermenting in the minds of people some new questions that can be asked, some of the challenges that are happening in an underdeveloped context, but also some of the opportunities. I think there's great stuff happening here. What I've found over the years is that you, you can have uh, grand aspirations and you can think about institutions and institutional entrepreneurship, but it all happens at the individual level, and I always work between those two levels is you will think about what you might do when you have the opportunity to say work with an organization like the Academy of Management to establish some principles and build some momentum and gather others with us. But at the end of the day, it's individuals. And so what I've been drawn to in all of my professional work is operating at both levels. And with respect to the students is to engage them as humans and then bring them, if you will, face to face with the challenges and the opportunities. And that's why I take my students with me uh, as best I can all around the world. And that's why the model for this conference was very different from our quote unquote normal Academy of Management meeting in that we created these learning journeys to bring faculty face to face with the needs and the opportunities and the inspirational stories of those that are trying to marry opportunity and need. Monday we took them to downtown Johannesburg basically as an orientation because our fear was that people will see these as, as touristy excursions. So we wanted them to understand from the outset that this is about engaging with the questions below the surface of a place. I think that helped set the tone for how people um, had to think about this experience. This is not just about um, coming to present your research, this is really about shaping how we think about our research going forward. I often wish when I go to a new country that somebody would give me a tour, not of the tourist spots, which usually you can find a way to, to get that, but of the business scene in that country. Uh, think of it as kind of a business tourism, and no one offers that. For me, this was a great e example of how you go to a country and you learn not only about its history and its culture, but also about its companies. And I probably got exposure to half a dozen South African companies, big, small, some micro enterprises. And that was a terrific uh, uh, opportunity. We spent some time uh, with an insurance company. And uh, you think they're primarily packaging products into uh, an uh, affordable uh, and profitable model. 
we went to a television station, and by all means, it was packaging, global programming, getting it out uh, in a profitable and uh, uh, entertaining manner to consumers, but it was also a question of how, how are we going to bring African content in, and do we have one voice in Africa or 45 voices in Africa? Probably my favorite was Copatech. We went into the Copatech branch. We saw how they operate. So it was very interesting to see how they have matched innovative kind of software that they bought with product innovation to serve the Alexandra community, and then how they've gone forward building a very close relationship but with their clients. While we were in the township, we were able to visit a school and talk with some of the kids there. We were able to walk around and see where people live and visit with them. We visited with a couple of small business owners, so entrepreneurs who are um, coming up with really intriguing businesses and working in their communities uh, to bring about change. We went to Lepang. Lepang is a preschool which has been um, developed on a hostile uh, park where drugs used to take place, where rape used to all manner of crime, but they have been able to rehabilitate that park, build a school, make the park hospitable, and I'm thinking if that can be replicated back in Kenya, I'm thinking that would be great for Kenyans. We went to the street arts to see how people, ordinary people, show their talent through drawing and how is really fascinating. It was very, very fascinating. There's a place called Clipton and what I saw there was not something that I expected to see in a country that has seen independence since 1994. What I saw there was rather disturbing. The gap between those who have and those without can end up being a, a disaster if not properly managed. I mean, the state in, in Clipton is, is really way, way below what human beings should have as, as standards of living. Tading every truth, bringing it to the table, and then forgetting everything. Kind of peace and reconciliation. Uh, converting the bad history into good ones, but without uh, coinciding the reality. The second lesson that I gained from the experiential journey is the statement by Nelson Mandela, the kind of vision that he had for this country. If things go well, he wants to live and to see and to finalize that vision. If not, he was willing even to the extent of dying for the vision that he has seen for South Africans. So what is my vision in this country, in this world? What do I want to accomplish? How much committed am I? towards my vision. What should we learn from, from him? Uh, now, how can we incorporate his ideas of vision into our management teaching? What contribution in my study is going to add to Africa and the whole world? So I, that is a challenge to me, and I'm carrying that one. Really, I want to achieve it. It exceeded my expectations. Uh, coming in, we had the question of can we get all these diverse voices uh, talking to one another, if not singing together? And secondly, uh, would we be able to break the mindset of this is a conference where we present ideas in particular ways, where the emphasis is on kind of research methodology, evidence-based management, uh, a logical presentation of facts and perspectives, to an appreciation of the diversity of ways of uh, uh, organizing our knowledge, of talking to one another and of uh, developing practice. And there, the combination of the, tr of the journeys uh, to different parts of uh, Joburg and the diversity of sessions and styles of sessions have really uh, let a thousand flowers bloom. We were concerned about whether we would have enough participation, but so far we have just been uh, excited by the level of involvement. You look around and see the conversations that are happening at small tables and the deep dialogue that's occurring at our learning journeys. You would have to say that yes, in fact, we're, we're meeting our mission here. I come away with a humble sense of satisfaction, but of deep satisfaction that I think we've done something here, both for the people here that have been at this conference and the testimony has been quite heartwarming, for lack of a better word, uh, but I'm also aware that there's symbolic value in what we've done here and that this will catalyze other institutions to uh, perhaps think, uh, think again about the potential uh, in and for Africa. And the whole vibe has been one of conversation. I want to learn. Tell me more. I didn't know that. And you know, sometimes with academics, we 
think we know all the answers. <laughs> so it's been kind of nice that I see people kind of scratching their head, being surprised. And so many projects are going to come out of this conference on different aspects. People are forming natural alliances to do more research, to come up with a practical idea. It's very important to make case studies from some of those stories because what you see in those places is a high sense of resilience. You see people who are going through hard times, but at the end of the day, they have a big smile on their faces, they have, a, they have something to look forward to. And I think the, the concept of resilience, which I see from there, is something that I can actually take back and, and, and use in my, in my classes. When I teach about vision, I'm going to mention Nelson Mandela. I don't have to quote some others. I have an African, a great man. Uh, hadn't I been to South Africa, I might not have been sensitized the phrase that he has said. In terms of scholarship, um, I, I could imagine they are so much, you know, they are so highly published. Um, some of us, uh, we are quite at the bottom, trying to come up. That passion for me in uh, wanting to give back is uh, really very useful, is very important. Indeed, the greatest message for me when I go back to my country is uh, what it is that I can be able to do uh, to the students uh, fraternity and also to my fellow lecturer in, uh, you know, in knowledge sharing. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I am really grateful that I was part of it because I've learned a lot in my small group discussions, we learned a lot. So much advice has been given, passed on. And I think now, um, I came with so much confusion, but my head is clear now. When I got here, I just thought, well, I'd be presenting, maybe get a couple ideas. And this thing has blown my mind. It has been transformative. Um, it has made me look at every aspect of my life in America and my approach to teaching very differently. You know, I walk away convinced what yet again that every country is unique. And I got a, a, a sense of what makes South Africa unique. I mean, its history, uh, the evolution it's gone through, its location, its natural resources, its unique blend of uh, talent from uh, uh, the advanced countries who moved here at some point, and the tensions now integrating that with the local human capital. All of those, I think, make it a very unique kind of a country. And, I, I leave with a slightly better appreciation of what makes South Africa unique. I can't put my finger on it and say this is the, the one or two things that really matter, but I feel I've uh, come to appreciate uh, the subtleties and some of the nuances that I would have missed completely. The most abiding image of the, of the conference will be at the very end of the event last night when all the speeches were done and the remarks were made and we all spoke to each other and gave appreciation and thanks to each other for the past week. I had this moment where I just sort of sat back and looked over the scene of that um, piece of humanity, if you will, uh, and it was just wonderful. There were people from 38 countries at this conference, and they were talking across what many people would see to be differences, differences in race, differences in gender, differences in the economy and socioeconomic status and paradigmatic differences, and we were all one, united in our, our common experience and our common aspirations. And I just sat there and took that in, and um, truth be told, that image, and it's more than an image, that's feeling, um, will stay with me for, for many, many years. Um, it, it, it revealed, I think, the, the, our aspiration for humanity and, and, and humanity at its best. It was a privilege to be a part of it.